let's talk about uh, the median now. So this is still the measures of center lecture here. We talked about the mode and that was pretty simple. Now let's talk about the median. The median is an interesting measure of center in that it's useful for so many situations. So here we're going to talk about the median and the quartiles. We have to talk about quartiles if we talk about the median because they're calculated essentially the same way and we use them in the same situations. So back to the basic principle, the typical observation is a middle score. The median is one kind of middle score. It's, we might say it's an average. Some people say the average is just the mean, but other people will say the mean, the median, and the mode, those are all just different kinds of averages. I'm a little more on the latter. I think that there's multiple kinds of averages because these center things all serve the same function. They tell us a typical score uh, from our data. So first things first, we need to learn what quantiles are. Not quartiles, but quantiles. Quartiles are a kind of quantiles. Quantiles are just the points on the number line that divide numerical data into equal groups. Percentiles you might be familiar with. Percentiles are just the points on the number line that divide the data into 100 groups. So you can say what point divides the lower whatever percent of the data from the rest of it. And that point will be a percentile or a quartile or a quintile or something like that. So if you're looking at percentiles, let's say you got a, a percentile score of 53. Someone says you were in the 53rd percentile. What that means is that 53% of people who took the SAT did worse than you. So you were at the dividing point between the lower 53% and the upper 47%. So the common and simple quantiles that we use all the time are the quartiles. I know those two words are so similar, but quartiles, quantiles is general, any division of your data set up into numbers of observations. Quartiles is division into four groups. Now we went through this before, so I don't think I should have to spend too much time. But here's a histogram where I've drawn in the block so you can see individual um, observations. If we cut it up into deciles, that's 10 groups. Notice you have to slice in the middle of some categories, and there's all sorts of mathematical rules. Mathematicians actually can't agree on these rules because there's no obvious answer for what's the best way to do this. But these red lines are the deciles, D1, D2, so they each have values. If you wanted to do the deciles, that's what they would be. Those are the deciles. With the same data set, you could divide it up into five groups, and sometimes people do quintiles like that. The first quintile, second, third, fourth. Notice that the quintiles are all close together up here, showing us that a lot of data is in the top end, and they're further apart down here. So imagining these are test scores or something, then it, it's a negatively skewed distribution, meaning that there are a lot of positive scores. Most people did well. And then quartiles. Divide this up into four points. I actually created this fake data set so the quartiles will work out so nicely. So Q1, the first quartile, meaning the first dividing point, is 19.5. Q2, which is also known as the median, divides the data in half, 24.5 and 23, or Q3 is 26.5. And of course, you know that works with box plots. The, the quartiles are very much a box plot thing. So our favorite quartile is Q2. It's the median. We actually don't usually call it Q2, we just call it the median. It's the point that divides the data in half. By divides it in half, I mean one half of the observations are above this point, one half of the observations are below this point. In calculating this, or finding it in fact, it's not so much calculating as just locating it, you don't care what the actual value of those observations are except to, to note which ones are higher and which ones are lower. That's it. You're just finding the middle point. Taking a group of people and saying, excuse me, excuse me, I'm just going to divide you in half. You have to go over there, you have to go over here. So you start by putting all your observations in order and you count them. That's n. And then you find the middle point. Now you can do this with brute force logic or you can use this cute little formula which is n plus 1 divided by 2. That's the middle point. So that will tell you which observation is the middle point. That's not the median. That just is like the road map to find the median. And then you count through your data from the lowest value up to the highest value, but you stop when you get to n plus 1 divided by 2, this value. And wherever you stopped, that's the median. The place on the number line, the value of the observation you counted to, or if there's no ob observation actually there, the value on the number line, that's the median. So a clear example, let's look at this, the sizes of nine families. Let's say you ask nine people how many people were in their family. You have a 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5. You see I put four threes and four fives and a 4 in between them. So this is pretty easy. You can see that 4 is the middle number. There are 
half of the observations are here, half of the observations are here, and four is what splits those two apart. So the median is actually a value in the data set here. Really easy to look at. But we could also figure this out by saying 9 plus 1 over 2 is 5. So the fifth observation is the median. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hey, that's the median, and its value happens to be 4. So the median is 4. Let's say if there are four people, an even number of people, uh, oh, sorry, I haven't got to the even, even number of people, forget I said this. So that's how you find the median. And it's fairly easy, but also the computer will do it for you. Now, remembering that this is what box plots do, this particular box plot has a circle, sometimes a circle or a star or a dot for the mean, because the box plot just shows you the median. Let's remember this student height thing, box plot, medians and quartiles, how those things work. This is how the quartiles work. 25% of the observations are below this division, 25% here, 25%. So 50 of them are to the left or lower than the median. 50%, sorry, not 50 observations, but half, 50%. If there's an odd number of observations, then the middle observation is the median. Its value is the median. So here's another example, GPAs. You have an odd number of observations. 3.2 is the middle one. These are ordered. And there are seven of them, so the fourth one, the one in the middle, is your, is your number. If you have an even number of observations, then the median is the point halfway between the two middle observations. There are different ways to calculate this. I'll just say it's the point halfway between the two middle observations. So here we have an even number of observations. So there are two middle observations, so we find the middle point, right between 3.2 and 3.4, is 3.3. So 3.3 is the median there. That's the center of that distribution, or the median center. So we could figure this out. Um, eight observations plus one divided by two is 4.5, and that 4.5 tells us to go halfway between four and five, and that's where we find the median, one, two, three, four. But we go to 4.5. We don't go all the way to five, we stop in the middle. So halfway there is 3.3. So, moving on here, more information. The advantages of the median, we love it because it works with lots of different kinds of data, including ordinal data. The only thing it doesn't work with is pure categorical, unordered categorical data. And it's what we call a robust statistic. It's a statistic that works in with data that has characteristics that make it not work with other kinds of statistics. We like the mean whenever possible, but there are all sorts of things that make us not able to use the mean or not able to get good answers from the mean. Uh, the mean isn't very good at representing the middle. So if you have a data set with a few scores that are extreme, so you have any outliers, so everybody's clustered around some value, but there are these two jerks that have really high values or really low values. Well, you don't want the mean. The mean is affected by that. But the median is not. The median doesn't move with a few extreme values. And with skewed data, uh, the mean responds very strongly to the skew and moves in the direction of the small little tail. But the median feels like an actual middle. And this is what this is for, partly. We, we like these middles, partly because they have mathematical properties, but the whole point of statistics is to help humans understand things. And if the mean, if the uh, middle that you're choosing, the center, doesn't feel anything like a center, then that can be a problem. And then, so we prefer the median for skewed distributions or distributions with lots of outliers or a few crazy high outliers or low outliers. The disadvantage is that the median is actually not representative of the value of every score. The way it becomes robust and not responding to these extreme values is by ignoring them is by only responding to a few values in general. It, basically, the only thing it cares about is where the middle of those numbers is. It's really only affected by like two or three values at all. All the rest of them just happen to be there as bulk. Uh, and there's no clear agreement on exactly how to calculate it with grouped data, for instance. So for some reason, I animated this little circle first. Let's calculate the median. So let's say um, you've got here SAT scores. Let's order them. This is where you're going to find the median right here. The way you know to find it there is you count all the scores. There are 11 of them. So the middle score is 11 plus 1, 12, divided by 2. It's going to be the sixth score. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go. So the sixth score is 540. So the median is 540. So now you know how to calculate medians.
the end.